What's up everybody, my name is Andy Du and I own a production company called Adu Productions and I have learned how to run and manage this business from the mistakes I have made. So I thought I would share a couple of those mistakes, six of those mistakes to be in fact, of how I've messed up over the years and how you can learn from my mistakes so you don't do the exact same things I did because I messed up a lot and I definitely don't want to have you go through that. If you are watching this video and you find throughout the video you have something that really piqued your interest and it helped you out, please like, subscribe to the channel. All right, so I'm gonna start this video off just by saying this, I have no hard feelings with anybody. Obviously, some of you who watch this video are gonna know me and this might be about you and it's no hard feelings against you. This is absolutely just what I've learned and how I wish I would have handled things better. Please don't get offended if you're one of these people that I've made a point about. But it's business and that's what we have to do to learn. You have a business, I have a business, we're all friends, right? All right, so let's get started. The first thing that I'm gonna tell you about is don't sell yourself short. Know your value, know what you're worth. Of course, you're gonna have to do stuff for cheap at the beginning once you start your company and get your name out there. But once you've actually been established, know what you're worth, know what your equipment's worth, so know what you can charge people and be okay with that and be confident in those. Some people are gonna say no just based on price. They're gonna think you're too cheap. They're gonna think you're too expensive. Some people wanna take advantage of you just because they think you're your friend and you should give them a deal and that's not always the way it should work. Sure, you can give your friends a discount, whatever, but you should definitely know your value and you should never sell yourself short because you are the business, you are the brand, so make sure that you know what you're worth and that you deliver and go above expectations every time you have a project, but definitely don't sell yourself short. Of course, you're gonna have to go cheap at the beginning, like I said earlier, but once you get established, know your value, charge what you deserve because you're worth it. Don't hide behind the camera at events. So a lot of times what I would do is I would go to these awesome events and I would be filming weddings, sports, all these different things. and I would just hide behind the camera and look busy all the time because I thought, you know, if these people see how hard I'm working, they'll want to book me. But no, I didn't really start booking contact gigs until I started just talking to people at events. So I'm at a wedding. There's like a dead time. The bride and groom's eating. They don't want to be filmed eating. So go up and talk to some people. Go around to the table. Sit with other people at the wedding. You know, set your camera out so they know who you're with, so they know what you're doing. That way you can strike up conversations. Who knows, these people might be engaged and they could get you a wedding video or they might have another event or a business or something like that. So be sure to be open at these events and don't hide behind your camera looking like you're busy whenever you don't have to be. If you have some downtime, go find some people, talk to them, make relationships, and be able to have it where these people know who you are so that whenever they want a project done that you're the first person that they call. This one's a big one. This one hurt me recently. Uh, always back up your footage. The other day I had my dog running around in my house acting all crazy and it ran over by my desk and pulled the cord for my hard drive. Hard drive hit the corner, busted, broken, can't recover it. Called the company, $2,000, the cheapest they could give me to give me my footage back because it's such a large drive. But four years of my filming history gone. It's gone can't get it back it's forever gone and I'm, I'm heartbroken about it but I had one project that I was working on for a school it was a graduation and I lost that footage from their graduation because I did not back up my footage so always back up your footage that that would hurt uh, definitely back up your footage it sucked <laughs> losing all of that footage especially with it being four years of my career on this hard drive and I didn't have any backups. So always back up your footage and save yourself a lot of heartache because if you're gonna lose footage, you're gonna, ha that's gonna take a hit on your company. People are gonna talk about how they lost your footage. You're gonna, it'll hurt your business. So don't do that. You'll get negative reviews, whatever. Just don't do it. Always back up your footage. So number five is really big. If you think that people in your community, in your niche, are your competition, you're going to lose. Yes, you want to be competitive with these people. Yes, you want to make better videos than them. Yes, you want to strive to be better than those people. But if you start thinking that, oh, they're they're out to get me, you know, they're out to 
you know, take my business. That's that's pointless. You're going to lose. So these people are very important to you in your business as you grow. Make friends with these people. If you have a relationship with these people and you're able to bounce ideas off each other, you're going to have times that you are booked and you're going to have to tell clients no. But if you just tell them no, sorry, and hang up, so if they have another event that they want to have filmed, they're gonna call the person that does their wedding film because you just told them no. But if you say, hey, yeah, let me reach out to a couple of people that I know, see if they have available dates. You start reaching out and saying, hey man, or hey girl, you got a opening on June 5th. And if they do, you can have a working relationship with these people and they'll give you contacts that you they're busy for and so on and so on. And you can definitely grow a partnership with people doing the same thing and one thing that's really big is I've done some private editing for people who film... There's an airplane. Like, it's so low. Do you see us? Yeah. Come on, guy. I'm trying to film a video here. Golly. But you can have a working relationship with these people. You can be able to bounce ideas off of each other. I've done some editing for different videographers because they didn't have the time to. They're, they got slammed one month and I was able to have a little bit of free time. I, had, I didn't have as busy as a month as they did. So I was able to take time to edit their videos for them so that they could get their equipment out and get their stuff out really fast. And we worked together and they, I was able to get paid whenever I had a low month. So if you have connections with these people, you can be able to work with each other, bounce ideas off of each other, and really grow as a business your, as yourself with other people who are doing the exact same thing. So do not isolate yourself in your niche because you need other people to help back you up and to help grow your business. And it's great to have friends who are doing the exact same things because they can come up with some ideas that you never even thought of. So always be friends with everybody that you can, even if they're in the same niche that you are. They're not your enemy. They're not. This one is definitely a big one. This one is probably more important than a lot of them, uh, but you're gonna want to have comfortable shoes. You are gonna be on your feet a lot. Comfortable shoes, not sponsored, but hey dudes are amazing. They're great for weddings. I recommend 100%. Uh, definitely get you some comfortable shoes. Try some out, wear them for a long time. Comfortable shoes will save you a lot of pain because let's be real. We're on our feet a lot and we're getting old. That's what happens. So get you some comfortable shoes and definitely have a lot of fun because you're going to be dancing. If you dance with your camera while you're at a wedding, people will book you like crazy. I've never danced at a wedding with my camera. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm going to start because I bet people would book more wedding films. Always have your contracts, always have your information planned out before you start a project and to have a backup plan for if something doesn't go right. So if you don't have anything lined up, they're gonna keep taking advantage of you, taking advantage of you and taking advantage of you and you're never going to get what you said and you're never going to get paid the way you deserve to be paid because you're reshooting, reshooting, reshooting. I worked on a project before having anything worked out with price, anything, and that project fell through. Uh, I made a video that had over a half a million views on Facebook and I got nothing from that because of COVID and because of all these other different things. The agreement that we had fell through because I was going to do a side project and help them. They were going to help me get funding for that. So, I mean, it didn't work out and I didn't have anything lined up beforehand. So I got absolutely nothing for that project and it's not their fault. It's my fault. Uh, I did not line up everything perfect. I thought in my mind, I could have a really good relationship with these people and we could do future projects and that just did not work out. All right, let's do a little recap. The six most important things to have whenever you start a production company are do not sell yourself short. Do not hide behind the camera. Get yourself some comfortable shoes. Treat yourself because you deserve it. Always back up your footage. Never, ever, never, ever think that the people who are in your niche are your competition because they're not. And lastly, sign contracts, get your deals worked out before you film or do anything for these people so you don't travel four hours and get nothing. But anyways, don't do what I've done. I've messed up a lot and I don't want you to do the same thing. So if you have the opportunity, 
make sure you do these six things to be able to grow a productive company. And like I said at the beginning of this video, no hard feelings to anybody that might be related to these conversations. I'm just trying to help some new beginners out and I hope you don't take offense to anything that I've said. It's all true. I've messed up. It wasn't you guys. And if you got some value out of this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I will be posting more videos just like this. If you have any questions about owning a production company, please comment below. I'll be more than willing to answer those in the comments or make another video relating to your con comment. Comment? Comment.